Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be showing you how to take control of your fans and your CPU cooler on your ASUS motherboard. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at how to control the fan speeds and CPU cooler performance on your ASUS motherboard. Now, this video is going to be broken up into a couple of sections. The first one is going to be how to configure things within the system's BIOS. So we'll definitely be doing that. And then later on, we'll be showing you how to use Fan Expert 4 actually within the Windows operating system to take a little bit finer control and do some on-the-fly changes. So let's get straight on with it. So the first thing to do is to go into the system BIOS. On your motherboard as you can see here so we are currently on our asus x570 tough gaming motherboard here and this is the first screen that comes up to get into the bios you need to just mash the delete key when the system's rebooting or you can do it via windows from the troubleshooting section but probably easiest just to use the delete key so you come up with this screen first of all this is in the kind of easy mode and on the left hand side here we can see we've got our fan profiles and fan speeds etc so you can see everything going nicely and you can see the fan RPMs, all that kind of stuff. And this is the bit we want to take notice of, the Q fan control. So let's go into that one first of all. So the first thing you want to do, if this is a new build and you've all got your fans connected, best thing to do is to do optimize all. And there's something you can do first of all to make life a little bit easier, and that is to actually make sure you go into each individual fan. So we've got our CPU fan, chassis fan one, two, three, etc., and our AIO pump and just make sure you've got it correctly configured. So you've got options for PWM or DC, and you wanna make sure that your fans are set up correctly. So our CPU fan is a four pin PWM, so clearly we've got it set to PWM. If you would set it to DC, you'll probably find that the, uh, the ramping is completely different, and also it's gonna be considerably noisier if it isn't designed to be used like that. If you're not sure if you've got a PWM or a Vultures DC or DC fan, Look at the pins on the actual fan header and you'll probably find that there's either three or four pins. A four pin is traditionally PWM and three pin is traditionally DC or voltage DC. So make sure you've got those set correctly. As we go through, you can choose your chassis fans and on this particular system, because of the way that the fans are controlled, these are using the Corsair SP120 RGB fans. Those are only three pin headers. So we've got those configured to DC as you can see, we've got all three fan headers connected currently. And for the AIO pump, again, make sure you set it correctly. We don't have a AIO water cooler installed in this system. So for us at the moment, it's just left to DC at 100%, which for most people will be absolutely fine. So the first thing you wanna do is to click on optimize all. Now what this is gonna do is gonna actually find the high and low spots for all the fans in the system. It will ramp them all up to 100% and then you'll find all the fans dropping down to zero RPM or stopping altogether. If you find that when you do optimize all, that you find that one or two of the fans don't stop at all, you may find that you've got your PWM or DC around the wrong way. So let's go ahead and click on optimize all. At which point you'll get up the QFAN tuning and it basically tells you what it's gonna do. Don't shut down your system or anything and it will take a few minutes. So click on okay. And possibly if you can just like make it out from the microphone, all the fans in the system have now revved up to 100%. Luckily, we've got some pretty nice fans in there, so it isn't overly noisy. You'll see there is a process bar on the screen, so you can keep an eye on that. But just let it do its thing. Don't use the system. Don't turn it off. Don't reboot it or anything. Just be patient and let it get to 100%, and then it'll go on to the next screen. So we'll wait for that. We're down to about 50% now, and pretty much all the fans in the PC have completely stopped. You may notice that one or two of the fans may periodically start up a little bit, stop, start up again. And that is basically the system finding out what is the lowest amount of voltage required to physically make the fan spin. So at the end of the Q fan tuning, you'll see that the minimum duty cycle or percentage of each fan has been changed. So our CPU minimum duty cycle has actually gone uh, down a little bit from 20% to 15%. And as you can see, the minimum chassis fans have all gone from 60% down to somewhere in the region of about 30%. A couple of them have registered 27 so when you're happy with that, just click OK. And now we can go into the individual fans and take control of them. So for our CPU fan, we can see now the curve has actually changed quite dramatically. Now you may find that for some people, this might be a little bit on the noisy side. So all you need to do is just click on that with the left mouse button and you can drag it around to create your curve. So if you wanted to, you could make it so that 
it's slightly more aggressive at the lower end, so starting at about 40%, gradually going up to somewhere in the region about 50%, and then as we head towards 70 degrees, which is on our bottom chart, we can ramp it up to 100%, which for some people may work out well, so keeping the system nice and quiet. If you wanted to, you can take advantage of the pre-built or in-built settings, so you've got options for standard, silent, turbo, full speed, and obviously manual is the one you want to select if you want to actually move the dots. If we set it to, for instance, silent, now the dots have disappeared, so we can't actually change anything at all. Some people may find these settings are absolutely fine, but for me personally, I prefer manual control. So we'll select manual control, and because we didn't click apply, it's gone back to how it was previously. So again, we change that. Once you've made a setting, change, click on apply, and then you can see the curve has updated. We can go to the chassis fans, and as you can see, they've uh, created some weird and wonderful settings on here. The ramping up at certain spaces. Again, for some people, you may want to adjust the curve more so, so it's a more gentle curve rather than this rather dramatic jump here. Once you change it, just click on apply. So I'm just going to do this one for now, and then we'll go into Windows after and configure them. As you can see, it's correctly identified, and there's been three pin fans, which is DC. Again, if you're using four pin fans, make sure you select PWM. If you're using some sort of fan hub, regardless of what the fans are, you may want to change it to whatever the actual hub itself is. You may need to play around with PWM and DC to get the fine control. You will notice if you set it wrong, the fans will generally ramp up to pretty much 100% and it will sound awful. So just switch between the two settings, PWM and DC. You may actually need to do a restart in order to the, for the settings to take effect. So anyway, we're happy with this, so we're gonna click on apply. Then we can click exit to come out of QFAN control. And this takes us back into the BIOS screen. So once you're happy that everything's set as you want it to be, you can then click on save and exit and then go back into Windows. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Once you click on save and exit, it gives you an update of all the settings which are gonna be changed. So all of our fan profile settings, you can scroll through just to make sure they're okay, but we can always change them in Windows later. So I'm gonna click okay and then it will finally shut down. Okay, so now for the next part of it. So this is actually in Windows. Now, what we're gonna to need to install is Fan Expert 4. I've already got it installed. As you can see, there's a little uh, icon down here, which you can go into. You'll also find it in your taskbar under AI Suite 3. So you'll probably have to install AI Suite 3, which has actually Fan Expert 4 built into it. Obviously, there's other ways you can do this. Armory Crate, I personally don't like it, so I'm choosing not to. Obviously, if you're using Armory Crate, then the settings will be slightly different. For me personally, I would say you're best off using the uh, AI suite rather than the Armory Crate software, which is uh, potentially horrible. So in order to get it, all you need to do is go to your motherboard site. So again, this is the Asus X570 Plus Tough Gaming. And if you just go into the support section, you can go into driver and tools and choose your operating system. And then you can scroll down through and software and utility. They do highlight Armory Crate, but you can choose all downloads if you want an older version, or if you go into this one, so you've got AI Suite 3, version 3.0. This is one I would say is probably your better bet. Again, obviously, choose whichever one suits you. We may do an update video with Armory Crate. If you want to see that, let us know in the comment section and we'll try and do that at a later date. So anyway, download the software. You can click on the download there, save it to your desktop, etc. and That'll be absolutely fine. Then you can extract it, install it, and you'll have one of these icons. So in order to go into the actual fan settings, we want to click on the settings cog here, and then maximize this window, and then we get the ASUS Power and Performance Saving Utilities. Head over onto the left-hand side, and with the pop-out menu then, we can just go into Fan Expert 4. Now, as you can see, we've got our options here for the fans. We've also got the same options that we had in the BIOS, so silent, standard, turbo, full speed, etc. And also we've got fan tuning. If when you go into this, above fan tuning, there's a little pop-up saying that you should do fan tuning, then obviously go ahead and do that just to make sure that it has all the settings. But the system knows what is going on, so we're absolutely fine. So in order to change any of your settings, all you do is click on this, the fan that you want to change. So we're gonna go into CPU fan. And as you can see, this opens up. So we're in smart mode because this is a PWM fan and it shows you all the settings there. So for the various RPMs through the different percentage. So 100% is gonna be nearly 1500 RPM for our particular fan. 
You've also got options to choose the spin up time and the spin down time. Now increasing the spin down time and leaving the fan spin up time to around like two seconds will make sure that when it does ramp up, it isn't a, an aggressive ramp up. If you change this right down, fan noise will be more noticeable. So the spin down time you can leave and that will actually aid cooling anyway because it will maintain the higher RPMs longer. So anyway, that's enough of that. So what we want to do is change our settings here. So if you want to change anything, for me personally, I always go for 100% at 70 degrees C, which for me seems to work well. We're around about 60% at 60 degrees C. And then you can set your lower temperature wherever you want to. I generally tend to go with 40% at 40 degrees. If for some reason your fan speeds aren't what you want them to be, or it's a little bit too loud or a little bit too hot, Obviously, you can just click on these and drag them around to wherever is appropriate. So if we uh, set it to there, then we click on Apply. You'll notice that the fan RPMs will start to ramp up a little bit. So as you can see, it's a bit slow to update, but as you can see, it is updating. So we're spinning slightly faster, so you can reduce that to however you see fit. We've got a particularly cool running and also a quiet running fan on our Notchua NHU12S. So most of the RPMs are absolutely fine. Again, you can change this however you see fit. So once you've applied that, that will save the settings. So we can go back and now we can go into one of our other fans. So our chassis fan one, which is on its own individual header. We can click on again, it has set it, which is uh, in a pretty good rate. Again, if you want to change any of these, you can just move the sliders around and change them how you see fit. Again, I'm going to set it to 70 degrees roughly for 100%. We'll set around about 60 at 60. So it's working the same as the CPU fan. Click apply. And that is going to save our settings. So now the system is going to be really quiet, spinning around about 30% of the power from 40 degrees up to there, where it's going to get a little bit louder as it goes on. But most systems will probably be in ambient temperatures when they're idling, somewhere in the region of 30 to 40 degrees anyway. So this is basically our idle speeds. As we start putting some pressure on the CPU, it will start increasing. Obviously, you can tell by the sliding scale. So blue is going to be exceptionally cold. Green is kind of middle. Yellow is getting towards the danger zone. And obviously, anything over 70 is going to be red. So that is uh, not a good thing. You can also set your critical temperature here. 75 degrees is the default. So that will either throttle the system or basically power it down. So that is the chassis fan. If we go back, we can go through and change the individual ones so they all match up if you wanted to. So you've got chassis fan two, very similar sort of setup there. So I'm going to leave that as it is. At the moment, it's very, very quiet. All the fans are doing what they should do and it's system staying quite cool. Our CPU currently is around like 35 degrees, which is our Ryzen 9 3900X. So that's absolutely fine. That's a pretty decent temperature. The ambient temperature in the room at the moment is, if I look over, about 24 degrees. So it's about 10 degrees over ambient temperature, which is absolutely fine. Again, you can go through is a carousel. You can choose your individual fans or fan header. If you've got a cooler, which is a water cooler with a AIO pump, again, you can choose the settings there. I would set it to maybe 80% and then ramping up to 100% at around about 60. That should give a gentle curve and shouldn't be too noisy. Some people may find the AIO pump will be a little bit noisy at 100% all the time. But again, a bit of trial and error, see what works best for you. Once you've changed it, click apply. Now, one good thing you can do, if you're someone who changes your fans regularly or you swap out components, you can actually save and load the profile. So if we save this profile, as you can see, I've got some profiles here. So we'll just call that test and click save. So now if we want to, we could load a profile. So we've got our test profile. Some fans that I've tested recently, so the Noctua 12, which is the NHU12S, Silverstone D120, etc. Or you can choose the profiles, which are essentially at the bottom here. But nice way of doing it. So once you've got a profile which works for you, you can set it, save it, have it as a profile. And then if you make any changes and you're not quite happy with it, rather than having to go through each individual setting, you can just reload a profile. One thing I should have mentioned as well, if you go into, say for instance, chassis fan. So smart mode is going to be essentially PWM based on the motherboard. If for some reason that's not working right, you can choose RPM fix mode. And then you can drag the speeds down. So if your fans aren't responding as you would think they would, then you can change and set a low and a high point. So high speed for these fans, 1350 RPM. 
and low speed you can set to zero RPM or you can maybe set it at a different level. So we'll set it to around about, set about 30%, that kind of thing. Again, you shouldn't really have to use this if your fans are detected correctly, but it's an option should you need it. Generally, you're best off leaving it in smart mode. Okay, so there you go. There are some ways to set up your fan profiles and actually save them, so make things a little bit easier. Again, if you're somebody who likes to tinker around with your PC and you're swapping out fans and changing fan speeds, whatever, then saving profiles and loading profiles is a really good way of doing it. Now, obviously, if you do want to see how this is done within the Armory Create software, as much as I'm begrudgingly going to do it, if I get enough people asking, then I will do a separate video for the Armory Create software and fan control, etc. So. Let me know in the comments section if that is something you want to see. Also, don't forget while you're down there, click on the like button if you've enjoyed this content, if it's been helpful. If you need more help, then don't forget, you can leave a comment down there, ask the questions you need to. Although realistically, if you want a more specific answer for a specific setup, you're better off joining our Discord chat, which uh, there's a link on the bottom there. And also if you scroll down, there'll be a link in the video description. So if you need any more help, get in touch. If not, all good. Don't forget to leave a like on the video. If you want to see more content like this, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the channel icon. You'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully, we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.